Okay, so good evening. So good Abend. Let us open with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet. Dear Father in heaven. Lieber Vater im Himmel. Thank you that we can open your word again. Danke, dass wir dein Wort wieder auftun können. And uh, thank you that in your your word are these rich treasures. Und danke, dass in deinem Wort sind diese reiche Schätze erhältlich. That satisfy the soul's hunger. Die den Hunger der Seele befriedigen. And Lord, we ask you to please uh, feed us now, that mm -hmm. we can feed others. Herr, wir bitten, dass du uns jetzt speist, so dass wir den anderen speisen können. And that we would understand the great sacrifice that Christ did on our behalf. Und dass wir die große Opfer verstehen, die Christus an unserer Stadt tat. And what implication it has for our personal life. Und was für eine Bedeutung es hat und eine Wirkung es hat für unsere persönlichen Leben. And we ask you, Lord, that you would please make us understand these things. Und wir bitten, Herr, dass du uns bewirkst, dass wir diese Sachen verstehen. And that we would drawn, get drawn uh, to you. Und dass wir zu dir gezogen werden. And that you can take away our indifference. Und dass du unsere Gleichgültigkeit entfernen kannst. And that we can truly become your children. Und dass wir wahrlich deine Kinder werden. And may you have mercy now upon us. So bitte erbarme dich unser jetzt. And uh, we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Und wir bitten und beten diese Sachen in Jesu Namen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so posted some notes in the livestream group. So, es gibt Notizen in der livestream Gruppe. And, and Brother Scott posted them on my behalf. Und das sind von mir uh, an Lorenz Stadt gepostet worden. Okay, so this evening we want to look at this topic about that Christ is our substitute. Und heute Abend wollen wir dieses Thema anschauen, die Christus, wo Christus unser um, Ersatz ist Stellvertreter. Stellvertreter, danke. And um, yesterday evening we looked at the story of Ruth. Und right? gestern Abend haben wir die Geschichte von Ruth angeschaut. So let's go back to Ruth chapter 4 in our Bibles. So lasst uns dann in unseren Bibeln zu Ruth Kapitel 4 zurückgehen. Let's uh, actually begin already in this, uh, chapter 3. Und wir fangen sogar bereits in Kapitel 3 an. Let's read verse 12 to 13. Die Verse 12 und 13. And this is when, uh, what's her name again, Ruth came to Boaz. Und hier ist wo Ruth zu Boaz ankam. And <coughs> basically she wanted him to do, to do this part of a kinsman. Und sie wollte, dass er diese Rolle der Verwandte ausführe. Und Vers 12. Vers 12 sagt es. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he would perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth. Lie down until the morning. So it was about doing the part of a kinsman. Right? So spielte es sich über die Rolle eines Verwandten auszuüben. But as we can see, mm -hmm. Boaz could only do this part of kinsman if he was the nearest one. Right? Aber wir konnten sehen, dass Boaz konnte diese Rolle nur ausführen, wenn er der Verwandte, der am nächsten Stand war. Okay, but there was one closer than him. Aber es gab eine, die am nächsten stand als er. And we understand in this story he illustrates Satan. Right? Und wir verstehen, dass dieser andere Verwandte in dieser Geschichte Satan darstellt. Okay, but eventually here in chapter 4. Aber letztendlich hier in Kapitel 4. Uh, we read here in verse 3. Wir haben in Vers 3 gelesen. It says, when they all were gathered together at this gate, to now basically discuss this legal thing here. Als sie alle beisammen gesammelt würde am Stadttor, um diese 
Recht, rechtliche. Diese rechtlichen Sachen zu besprechen. Uh, Thessian verse 3. Und er sagt in Wir haben gestern ein Zitat von den Pionieren gelesen. We will read it also shortly here in this document. Wir werden das gleich wieder in diesen Notizen lesen. But basically What happened to Naomi? What did she do at, Ruth, at the beginning of the book of Ruth and Ruth 1? Aber was geschah mit Naomi? Was tat sie am Anfang des Buches Ruth ist, um, im Kapitel 1? Went into Fark. Yeah, she went down to Moab, right? Sie ist uh, nach Moab gezogen. And there her husband died and her two sons died. Und da ist ihr Ehemann und ihre zwei Söhne gestorben. So basically What, did, what happened to her inheritance therefore? So, was geschah mit ihrem um, Erbe deswegen? Yeah, she lost it. Sie right? hat's verloren. So therefore when she returned, now it had to be brought back into her possession. So, right? Deswegen als sie jetzt zurückgekehrt hat, es muss wieder in ihrem Besitz gebracht werden. And we illustrated this also when we were... Let me just draw this in. Uh, from 2014. So from 2014. To the civil Sunday law. When you have the first birth, what do you obtain? When you the first birth bekommen hast, was erhältst du? The inheritance, right? Die Erb, das Erbteil. Okay, but what can happen to your inheritance? Aber was kann mit deinem Erbteil geschehen? You can lose it. Kannst du es wieder verlieren? In Ezekiel chapter 16. Und in Ezekiel 16. Yeah, we read about this woman. Gelesen von dieser Frau. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was married to Christ. Right here. Sie war äh, wunderschön. Sie ist mit Christus gerade an dieser Stelle verheiratet worden. But then she fell away, right? Aber dann fiel sie weg. And what was Christ doing? Was with tat her? Christus mit sie? Er was pleading with her, right? Er flehte mit return. sie, dass sie zurückkommen. Yeah. And we saw that when we go to the law, to Leviticus chapter 25. Und wir haben gesehen, dass wenn wir zum Gesetz, zum dritten Buch Mose 25 gehen. Uh, that if you fall away in the sense that you lose your possession, okay? Es wenn du wegfällst in dem Sinne, dass du deinen Besitz verlierst. It says now verse 24 and 25. Es sagt in die Verse 24 und 25. And in all the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. Okay, so there was this option that somebody else could redeem it back for you. Right? So it's this option that someone else does for the sale of it. So therefore we could see that when you lose your inheritance, you need a redeemer. Right? So you can see that when you lose your inheritance, you need a redeemer. Somebody who now steps in and buys back what you lost. Jemand, der in die Bresche tritt und das zurückkauft, was du verloren hast. In Leviticus 25, Vers 24 to 25. Ja, dritte Buch Mose 24. 25. 25. Vers 24 to 25. Okay, and who was the first man that lost his inheritance? Und wer war der erste Mann, der seine Erbteil verlor? Adam, right? Das war Adam. So he lost it and then... The Redeemer came to buy it back for him. So, okay. Er hat es verloren und der Erlöser ist gekommen, um es für ihn zurückzukaufen. But the law said it must be somebody, a kinsman, right? Aber das Gesetz sagt, es muss eine nähere, eine nähere Verwandte sein. Okay, and then we went to Hebrews chapter 2. Dann sind wir zu Hebräer Kapitel 2 gegangen. And just to show that he became a kinsman to us. Nur um zu zeigen, dass Christus ein... Verwandte für uns geworden ist. Let's read again verse 14. Wir lesen to 17. Vers 14 und 17. Down to 17. 14 bis 17. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So he also took uh, flesh and blood on him. So er hatte Anteil an Fleisch und Blut genommen. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him 
the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So it speaks about the, the nature, right? So spricht hier über die, die Natur. So Christ took on him our nature. So Christus hat unsere Natur auf sich genommen. Okay. And it says in verse 17. Vers 17 sagt es, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So he was made like unto whom? So as we have his brethren. Right? So we are his brethren. Sister White also says Christ is our older. Brother, right? Wir sind seinem Geschwister, also Ellen White sagt, dass Christus unsere ältere Brüder sei. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Yes, also verse 11. Yes. Verse 11. Go to verse 11. It says, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Yeah, so he calls us brethren. So er nennt uns Geschwister. Okay. And when you, so in Hebrews too, it says he took on our nature, right? He took on the seed of Abraham. Hebrews 2 says that he took on our nature, the same Abraham. When we go now to Philippians chapter 2, when we go to Philippa chapter 2, it says, and let's read verses 5 to. Eight. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, how was Christ before he was man? So, wie war Christus noch bevor er Mensch geworden ist? In the form of God. Das eben Bild Gottes oder in Form Gottes. Now verse seven. Vers 7. But made himself of no reputation and took, him, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. So then it says he took on him the form of a servant. Right? So he was in the form of God and then he was in the form of man. Right? Okay. But Hebrews says it was the nature of man that he took. Hebrews says it was the nature of the man that he took. Verse eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay. And now let's go also to Romans chapter eight. Let's go to Romans eight. Verse eight. And we want to read verse 3, but maybe let's begin in verse 2, just to have a little bit of context. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay. So sounds pretty difficult to understand what he wants to say here. Okay. schwer an zu verstehen, was er hier sagen möchte. Okay. But the point I want to highlight, okay. Aber der Punkt, auf den ich aufmerksam machen möchte. Says here, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Er hat okay. seinen eigenen Gott, seinen eigenen Sohn gesandt hat in den Bildnis von äh, sündhaftiges Fleisch. No, oder Gleichheit. Oder Gleichheit von sündhaftiges Fleisch. Okay, so Christ, he took upon his, himself this sinful flesh. Okay. So Christus hat dieses sündhaftige Fleisch auf sich. But what does Sister White say? Aber sa was sagt Ellen White? What must be, what must we be careful of? So, auf was müssen wir achten? Yeah. yeah, he had no evil propensities, right? Wir sollten nicht darüber nachdenken, dass Christus in irgendeiner Weise unheilig war. Der hat keine böse Neigung. Yeah, so he took this sinful body, but not the sinful mind. Okay? Er hat diese sündhaftige Leib genommen, aber nicht den Verstand. Yeah. So, because when we go to Luke chapter 1, Denn wenn wir zu Lukas 1 gehen, In 
then let's read verse 35. This is now when Gabriel came to Mary. It says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Okay, so what was Christ from the beginning? So was war Christus von Anfang an? That holy thing. Okay. Dieses heilige Sache. So he was holy from the beginning. Er war okay. heilig von Anfang an. Okay. So obviously pertaining to his mind. Right? Das bezieht sich auf seinen Verstand. Okay. So, all right. But the point uh, I want to make is that he became man. Okay. Aber der Punkt, den ich hier machen möchte, ist, dass er Mensch geworden ist. He became ist. like one of us. Er ist wie einer von uns geworden. Except obviously his mind was holy. Okay. Außer dass natürlich sein Verstand heilig war. Whose mind was also holy? Wessen Verstand war auch heilig? Adams, right? Adam sein. Before he fell into sin, he had flesh and he had a mind. Okay. Before in die Sünde fiel, der hatte Fleisch und ein heiliger Verstand. I mean, he had no sinful flesh, but he Yeah, he had flesh and mind. Keine sündhaftige Fleisch, aber der hat Fleisch und ein Verstand. Okay, so now let's go to this first, in the quotes, the first Bible verse. So, lasst uns in die Notizen gehen, diesen ersten Bibelvers. It says now in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. 1. Johannes 2, die Vers 1 und 2. It says, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, so according to verse 2, so, for whom did Christ die on the cross? Is am Kreuz the whole world. For the whole world. Okay, the world. okay. so he's the the. Propitiation for the whole world. So, er ist die Lösegeld für die ganze Welt. Now let's go, or oh, Sündopfer. Sündopfer. Now let's go to the next quote. So, nächsten Zitat. It says, We are not under a system of mere requirements, mere justice and unsympathizing rigor. The penalty of transgression, uh, transgressing the law has fallen upon our substitute and surety. And for a time, has been suspended, so that the guilty do not feel its weight. But the object of this suspension is not to teach us that its claims are over, its exactions set aside, but to attract us to holiness, to obedience. So, upon whom has fallen our penalty? So, auf wem is unsere Strafe gefallen? Our substitute. Oh, yes, on, upon our substitute and surety. Right? So, auf unsere Söhneopfer und Sicherheit. Yes, and substitute is Stellvertreter. So, Stellvertreter. Yes. So, and this is this, yeah, this doctrine that Christ is our substitute. Und das okay. ist diese Lehre, dass Christus unsere ähm, Ersatz oder Stellvertreter yes. sind. Yes. Okay, and there are some in the Adventism who even fight against this doctrine. Okay. Es gibt sogar welche in den Adventismus, die gegen diese Lehre ankämpfen. Okay. So, now let's go to the next quote. So, lasst uns jetzt zur nächsten Zitat gehen. Because in the quote we just read, it says, the penalty of our transgression came upon our substitute. Right? Das Zitat, die wir eben gelesen haben, es sagt, dass die Strafe von unserer Übertretung ist auch unserer Stellvertreter gekommen. And it says here, sagt, next quote, nächster Zitat, the fact that his own son The surety for man was not spared is an argument that will stand to all eternity before saint and sinner, before the universe of God, to testify that he will not excuse the transgressor of his law. Every offense against God's law, however minute, is set down in the reckoning, and when the sword of justice is taken in hand, it will do the work of impenitent transgressors that was done to the divine sufferer. Justice will strike, for God's hatred of sin is intense and overwhelming. Okay, so what can we see here? So what can we here see? 
what what happened to our divine savior so was ist mit unserer heiliger erlöser geworden to upon himself out of offenses yes er hat auf sich unsere übertretung every little offense right she says here every minute offense came upon him so jeder von unsere ja übertretungen ist auf ihm gekommen yes. every minute offense so jeder kleinigkeit yeah. so <coughs> In, in the quote earlier we read it was the penalty of it. Yes? In the zuvor haben wir gelesen, das ist die Strafe dessen war. And in 1 John we read it was not only the sins of the saints, but the sins of every human being on this planet. Right? Wir All haben in 1. Johannes gelesen, dass es nicht nur unsere Sünden, sondern jede einzelne Sünde der ganzen Welt war. Okay. So, <coughs> sin of the saints. Let's continue. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Paul says here, what was Christ made to be? So Paulus sagt here, what is Christus geworden. Yeah, he, he was made sin. Yeah, right? Sünde gemacht worden. For us, it says. Um unser Willen. Okay. And in Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, it says. Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, it says. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So here we can see it also, all our sins came upon him. Right? Okay, next quote. Knowing all this, Christ bore the penalty of transgression. He was crucified and buried but he broke the fetters of the tomb and over the rent sepulchre of Joseph proclaimed, I am the resurrection and the life. To all who receive him, he gives power to become the sons of God. He paid the redemption price for every son and daughter of Adam and he's abundantly able to save all who come to him. So he paid this redemption price. So I had this Lösegeld bezahlt. Only by Bearing on the cross the punishment for our disobedience, could Christ deliver us from eternal death. He became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Repentant sinners stand before the Father justified, because the innocent one has borne their guilt. Okay, next quote. Next citat. Under the mighty impulse of his love, He took our place in the universe and invited the ruler of all things to treat him as representative of the human family. He identified himself with our interests, bared his breast for the stroke of death, took man's guilt and its penalty and offered in man's behalf a complete sacrifice to God. By virtue of this atonement, He has power to offer to man perfect righteousness and full salvation. Whosoever shall believe on him as a personal savior shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so what did Christ become according to this quote? Here? So, gemäß dieser Zitat, was ist Christus geworden? Our representative, right? So, unser Stellvertreter. So, he's totally representing us. So, okay. er stellt uns gänzlich dar. And as our representative, und als unser Stellvertreter, he then says here, took the stroke of death. Sagt, right? dass er diese Todesschlag auf sich nahm. And took man's guilt and its penalty. Er nahm den Schuld des Menschen und seine Strafe auf sich. Okay. And when we go now to Galatians 3, verse 13, wenn wir zu Galater 3, Vers 13 gehen, it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, 
Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So in Corinthians we we read he was made sin for us. So in Corinth haben wir gelesen, dass er Sünde unser Willen gemacht wurde. And here it's he was made a curse for us. Und hier sagt es, er ist für uns ein Fluch gemacht worden. Okay. So he was when he bore the penalty he was sin and a curse. Okay. Also die Strafe trug äh, ist Sünde und den Fluch gewesen. Okay. But who is actually the personification of sin? Aber wer ist der äh, in Leibwerdung der Sünde? Satan. Satan, right? Satan. Okay. And Satan, what's his symbol in the Bible? Satan, was ist sein Symbol? Red dragon. Yes. The serpent, right? Also, der Schlange. Okay. So, and when you go to John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Johannes 3, die Verse 14 und 15 geht. It says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So here Christ compares himself to the serpent on the pole. Right? So here Christus vergleicht sich mit dieser Schlange auf der Stange. Because when he cried out, it is done. So as er rief, es ist vollbracht. What did he become right then and there? Was ist er gerade an diesem Moment geworden? What did we read in Corinthians? Was haben wir in Korinther gelesen? He was made sin, right? Er ist Sünde gemacht worden. And he was also made a curse, also right? Er ist auch ein Fluch gemacht worden. Because right then and then the Lord punished him. Denn gerade an dieser Stelle der Herr bestrafte ihn. But he punished him as if he was Satan, right? Aber er bestrafte ihn als wäre er Satan. Ja. Yeah. Because he punished all the sins of the whole world in Christ there. Weil er bestrafte alle Sünde der ganzen Welt in Christus an dieser Stelle. Yeah. He, was, he was punished as if he was sin. Right? Er wurde bestraft, als wäre er Sünde. Okay, so, and therefore Christ illustrates himself that he's the serpent on the, on the pole. Und deswegen okay. stellt Christi sich selbst dar, als wenn er der Schlange auf der Stange wäre. Yeah, but only what did we read in Isaiah chapter 53? Aber was haben wir in Isaiah 53 gelesen? Just go up again to Isaiah 53. And verse 5. Verse 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. So how can we be healed? So wie können wir geheilt werden? Through him taking the stripes upon himself. Yeah, through him taking the penalty of our transgressions upon him. Right? So in dem, dass er die Strafe unserer Übertretung auf sich nimmt. Because actually, we should have been in this place, right? Wir hätten an seiner Stelle sein sollen. Yeah, we should have been receiving this punishment as sin. Right? Wir hätten diese Bestrafung um, bekommen müssen als Sünde. Because at the end of the thousand years, when all the wicked will die, denn am Ende der tausend Jahren, äh, Jahre, wenn alle Bösen sterben werden, why will they die? Warum werden sie sterben? Because they rejected it. Because they are sinners, right? Weil sie Sündern sind. Okay. And Satan will he suffer for their sins? Und Satan wird er leiden für ihre Sünden? No, right? Nein. He will only suffer for the sins of the righteous. Right? Er wird nur leiden für die Sünden der Gerechten. Yes. Amen. Because Christ, when he comes and puts this, the sins on the scapegoat, whose sins he puts on the scapegoat? Denn wenn Christus kommt und die Sünden auf der Sündenbock legt, wessen Sünden legt er da? Sure. Yeah, all those that had the sins in the, the sins in the sanctuary that were blotted out, right? So, all diejenigen, die die Sünden im Heiligtum gehabt haben, die ausgetilgt wurden. Yeah. But if you don't have your sins blotted out, you must bear your own sins, right? Und wenn du deine Sünden nicht ausgetilgt hast, dann musst du sie selbst tragen. And you, when you uh, close your probation, what does the Bible says in the parable of the wheat and the tares? Und du, wenn du deine Gnadentür schließt, was sagt es in der Bibel im Gleichnis von Weizen und Unkraut? What, what are you now? Was bist du jetzt? 
You, you know a tear, right? Bis jetzt ein Unkraut. Okay, and what does it mean? Und was bedeutet das? The embodiment of error. Yeah, the embodiment of error. Die Verkörperung von Irrtum. You know perfect in this image of Satan, right? Bis jetzt perfekt in diesem Ebenbild Satans. So you know per personification of sin. Das so right? ist eine Personifizierung der Sünde. Okay, and therefore you're like the serpent now, okay? Und deswegen bist du wie der Schlange jetzt. And you now receive this penalty of your transgression. Und okay. du erhältst jetzt diese Strafe deiner Übertretung. Okay, so, but Christ, when he died on the cross, he was our representative. Aber Christus, als er am Kreuz starb, er war unser Stellvertreter. So, back then, uh, for instance, he knew all my sins that I would ever commit in my life. Okay. So, damals in der Geschichte, er wusste all die Sünden, die ich in meinem gesamten Leben ähm, begehen würde. And all my sins, were, the penalty of all my sins, were put on him back then. Die Strafe all meine Sünden sind auf ihm damals gelegt worden. Yeah, but not only the penalty of all my sins. Aber nicht nur die Strafe für all meine Sünden. But of yours, of yours, of yours, yes, of every man's sin. Okay. Aber von deiner und deiner und deiner und sogar von die Sünden von jedermann. Okay. So, and this is what what happened there on the cross. Okay. Und das ist was da am Kreuz geschah. So and therefore he became our substitute. Okay. Deswegen ist er unser Stellvertreter geworden. So in this sense, our case has already been dealt with in a sense that it was already punished. Okay. So, in diesem Sinne unser Fall ist bereits abgeschlossen in dem Sinne, dass es ähm, bereits bestraft wurde. Okay. So let's just continue and then we can maybe understand this. Better. Lesen wir weiter und dann können wir es vielleicht besser verstehen. Let's go to this next quote from the Desire of Ages. Zu diesem nächsten Zitat von das Leben Jesu. This speaks now about Christ's baptism. Und das hier spricht über die Taufe Jesu. It says here, Jesus did not receive baptism as a confession of guilt on his own account. He identified himself with sinners. Taking the steps that we are to take and doing the work that we must do. His life of suffering and patient endurance after baptism was also an example to us. So it says here that he identified himself with sinners and took all the steps that we need to take. Right? So, sagt hier, er identifizierte sich mit Sündern und nahm alle Schritte, die wir hätte nehmen müssen. Next paragraph. Next paragraph. The Savior's glance seemed to penetrate heaven as he pours out his soul in prayer. Because right after the baptism he knelt down and prayed. Right? Gerade nach seiner Taufe ist er hat er niedergekniet und gebetet. Well he knows how sin has hardened the hearts of men and how difficult it will be for them to discern his mission and accept the gift of salvation. He pleads with the Father for power to overcome their unbelief to break the fetters with which, which Satan has enthralled them, and in their behalf to conquer the destroyer. He asks for the witness that God accepts humanity in the person of his son. So, what did he ask for? So, wonach bittet er? That God accepts humanity in the person of his son. Right? Dass Gott uh, die Menschheit in der Person seines Sohnes akzeptiert. So what did he therefore become? So was ist er denn geworden? A substitute, a representative, right? Unser Stellvertreter, unser Fürsprecher. Okay, so therefore he, everything he did was now representing humanity, okay? So, alles was er jetzt tat, ähm, repräsentierte die Menschheit. So for instance he took baptism so, er Taufe genommen, in place of humanity. So okay. in unserer Stadt. He himself, he didn't have to be baptized, okay? Er selbst hat es nicht nötig getauft zu sein. But he did it for us, making, giving a perfect baptism, okay? Aber er tat es für uns, er hat eine perfekte Taufe dargebracht. Because what was, um, what did we read, what was Baptisms an illustration of? Wie haben wir gelesen? Von was ist die Taufe eine Darstellung? Das in Desire of Ages 111.2. Sagt in das Leben Jesu 111.2. Jesus did not receive baptism as a confession of guilt on his own account. Okay. So baptism was is an illustration of confession of 
Genau. Also, okay. Taufe ist eine Darstellung von der Bekenntnis von Sünde. So Christ did this in order to represent humanity doing it perfectly. So okay. Christus hat dies um die Menschheit darzustellen, indem das er es perfekt hat. Yeah, that whenever we do it imperfectly, he can basically attribute his perfect to our imperfect. Okay. Also, wenn immer wir es nicht perfekt machen, er kann also die Tugenden seines perfektes Seins dazu fügen. Okay, so let's read this now, this next quote by A.T. Jones. The next yeah. Zitat lesen wir, das ist von A.T. Jones. And he comments also on this occasion of baptism. Und er kommentiert auch über diese Taufe. It says, we read here his confession of sin. This was he as ourselves and in our place confessing our sins and we needed that also. So when Christ there repented, yeah, he didn't repent of his own sins. Okay. So als Christus da Buße tat, der hat nicht Buße von seinen eigenen Sünden getan. Yeah, he repented on our behalf. Er hat Buße getan an unserer Stadt. Yeah. As a representative of all humanity. Als okay. ein Repräsentant der gesamten Menschheit. So he repented there of all the sins that humanity was ever to be committing. So okay. Er tat Buße von alle Sünden, die die gesamte Menschheit je begehen wird. Okay. And did the father accept this repentance? Und hat der Vater diese Buße an angenommen? Yes. Yeah, he's answered then and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Ja, okay. Er hat geantwortet, dies ist mein geliebter Sohn, in dem ich wohlgefallen bin. Because, and this is so awesome, because when you go now to first, I think first Timothy, chapter 3. Und wenn wir zu 1. Timotheus, Kapitel 3 gehen. Actually, it's chapter 2, 1 Timothy 2. Let's read verses 3 to 4. It says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to, and come, sorry, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Let's read down even to verse 6. Bis Vers 6 ist. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay, so according to verse 4, so gemäß Vers 4, how many people does, do God want, does God want to save? Wie viele Menschen möchte Gott uh, retten? All, right? Allen. So, in, if he wants to save all, was there a true possibility that all can be saved. Und wenn er allen retten möchte, gab es eine wahre Möglichkeit, dass allen gerettet hätte gerettet werden können? Yes. Yes. Possible. Yeah. Yes. Because Christ, he died for all humanity. Right? Christus, der ist für die gesamte Menschheit gestorben. Yes. yes. Der Mensch muss wählen. And Christ, when he he prayed for the forgiveness of sin at his baptism. Und als Christi für die Vergebung der Sünde bei seiner Taufe betete. He also prayed as the representative of all humanity. Er okay. betete auch als der Repräsentant der gesamten Menschheit. So he asked for forgiveness for all humanity. So okay. Er bat um Vergebung für die gesamten Menschheit. So in this sense everybody has the real chance to be saved. So okay. In diesem Sinne jeder hat der wahre Gelegenheit gerettet zu werden. And because Christ Paved the way. Okay. Christus hat den Weg gebannt. Yeah, he made the perfect repentance on our behalf. Die perfect, perfekte Vergebung, also Buße an unserer Stadt gemacht. And he also paid the price, the redemption price on our behalf. Okay. Und er hat auch den Lösegeld an unserer Stadt bezahlt. And so let's just read this quote again here by A.T. Jones. Okay. Diesen Zitat von A.T. Jones. So let's begin again in, at the beginning of it. So, wieder von Anfang. So this here, we read here his confession of sin. This was he as ourselves and in our place, confessing our sins, and we needed that also. He was baptized in our behalf, because no baptism on our part could be perfect, so as to be accepted in righteousness. Yeah, so our baptism would always be faulty. Okay. So, unser Taufe wird immer fehlerhaft sein. Yeah. It must be perfect to be accepted. 
No man's confession of sin can, in itself, ever be so perfect as to be accepted of God in righteousness, because man is imperfect. But it must be perfect to be accepted. And so he also gave this perfect confession of sin, right? Auch diese perfekte Bekenntnis der Sünde abgelegt. Where then shall perfection of confession be found? Ah, in him my confession of sin is perfect, for he made the confession. And so, in Christ, my confession is perfect, because then Christ's confession is attributed on my behalf. So, in Christus, mein Bekenntnis ist perfekt, denn mein Bekenntnis ist in Christus an meine Stadt ähm, gewirkt. And when we go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, Und wenn wir zurück zu 1. Timotheus Kapitel 2 gehen, and let's read again verse 3 to 6. Lesen wir wieder die Versen 3 bis 6. It says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one Mediator, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So what is there between God and man? So what gibt es zwischen Gott und den Menschen? The mediator. Okay. The Fürsprecher. Man Christ Jesus. The yeah. Mensch Jesus Christus. So through his mediation he can now attribute to us his perfect confession. Right? So, durch seinen Fürbittedienst er kann seine perfekte Bekenntnis uns geben. Uh, his perfect baptism. Okay. Seine perfekte Taufe. Okay. But how can all his attributes be attributed to, to us? Aber wie kann all seine Tugenden auf uns kommen? Through faith. Through faith. Exactly. Ich glaube. Okay. So and this is the key, brothers and sisters. Okay. Und hierin liegt der Schlüssel. And that's why we need the Galatians 4 experience. Und right? deswegen brauchen wir der Galater 4 Erfahrung. Because the Galatians 4 experience teaches us how to have the faith of Jesus. Denn der Galater 4 Erfahrung lehrt uns, wie wir die Glaube Jesu haben. Yeah, that in order then we can receive all this perfect, uh, this perfection of Christ. So okay. dass wir all die Perfektion Christi erhalten können. And because then it says, then the perfect is. Come, right? Das sagt es, das Perfekte ist gekommen. Okay. So now let's continue here in this quote. So lesen wir diesen Zitat weiter. It says, How many times when persons have made confession as thoroughly as they know how, Satan gets the advantage of them by su the suggestion, you have not properly confessed your sin. You have not confessed hard enough to get forgiveness. Oh, of course you have confessed. But you have not done it hard enough. God cannot forgive you on such a confession as that. Hold the word of God up before him and tell him, There is one who is perfect. He bore my sins and he has made the confession. And when he shows me the sin, I confess it according to my power and ability. And as God reveals it to me and in him and by virtue of his confession, mine is accepted in righteousness. His confession is perfect in every respect, and God accepts mine in Him. So we can never, in our ourselves, make this perfect confession. Okay? So, also in können wir nie diese perfekte Bekenntnis geben. Mm -hmm. But when we exercise this faith in His perfect confession, then it can be accounted unto us. Okay? Wenn wir Glaube üben in seine perfekte Bekenntnis, dann kann es uns angewandt sein. And where is it that Satan will come to you? and tells you that you are totally lost without any hope. Und wo ist es, wo Satan zu dir kommt und sagt, du bist verloren ohne Hoffnung? Yes, Elihu, right? Das ist, wo Elihu ist. So, right here, when you now see the sinfulness of sin, okay, the condemnation of the law comes upon you. Da, wo du die Sündhaftigkeit der Sünde siehst und die Verdammnis des Gesetzes über dich kommt. Yeah. Then it's exactly what Satan will tell you. You have no hope. Okay, your confession is worthless. Is gerade dann, wo Satan sagen wird, du hast keine Hoffnung. Deine Bekenntnis ist wertlos. But then you must exercise faith in the confession of Christ on your behalf. Aber dann musst du Glaube üben an den Bekenntnis Christi an deine Stadt. And you need to just confess as according to ability and trust that his perfect confession will suffice. Okay. Du musst nur bekennen gemäß deiner Fähigkeit und glaube, dass sein Bekenntnis genüge für dich. Okay. So, let's continue. Next paragraph. Weiter, nächster Absatz. It says, 
then in him we have exemption from Satan's discouragement as to whether we have confessed our sins hard enough, sought them out faithfully enough, or repented enough. In Christ we have repentance, in him we have confession, in him we have perfection, and in him we are complete. Oh, he is the Savior. Next paragraph. Next upside. But who was he? He was ourselves. Okay, and this is that what we need to understand. Yeah, he became us. Okay. Das ist was wir verstehen müssen. Er ist uns geworden. He became our representative. Er ist okay. unser Stellvertreter And he, geworden. as our representative, went through the plan of salvation perfectly. Okay. Er ist unser Repräsentant. Er ist durch die Erlösungsplan perfekt hindurchgegangen. So in this sense, you and I, we already went through the plan of salvation perfectly in him. So okay. in diesem Sinne, du und ich, wir sind bereits durch die Erlösungsplan perfekt gegangen in ihm. And whenever we are in him by faith, we can partake of this Perfection. Okay. Wann auch immer wir in ihm sind, durch Glaube, wir können Teil an dieser Perfektion nehmen. Yes. Amen. And this is so wonderful when we understand this. Und das ist wunderbar, wenn wir dies recht verstehen. Okay. So, now let's continue. Dann lesen wir weiter. Let's go to this next quote. It's also by A.T. Jones. So, nächsten Zitat, das ist aber auch von A.T. Jones. It says, We are still studying the name of Christ, which is God with us. And as stated before, he could not be God with us without becoming ourselves, because it is not himself that is manifested, manifest in the world. We do not see Jesus in this world as he was in heaven. He did not come into this world as he was in heaven. Nor was the, that personality manifested in the world which was in heaven before he came. He emptied himself and became our selves. And this is what we read in Philippians 2, right? This is what we read in Philippians 2. Yeah, it says he was in the form of God. So he was in God's form. But then he took on the form of a servant, right? But then he took on the form of a servant. Okay. It says, Then putting his trust in God, God dwelt with him, and he being ourselves, and God being with him, he is God with us, that is his name. If he had come into the world as he was in heaven, being God, manifesting himself as he was there, and God being with him, his name would not have been God with us, for he would not then have been ourselves. Uh, if he had come in the form of God down on this earth, he wouldn't be us. He wouldn't be us right? Therefore, it could not be said God with us because it would be God with God. Right? Okay. But he emptied himself. He himself was not manifested in the world. For it is written, No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Not simply no man, but no one. No one knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. It is not written, No man knoweth the Son but the Father, and he to whom the Father will reveal him. No, no man knoweth the Son at all but the Father. And the Father does not reveal the Son in the world, but the Son reveals the Father. Christ is not the revelation of himself. He is the revelation of the Father to the world, and in the world, and to man. And that's also interesting. I was thinking about this. Because yeah, when you go to Revelation chapter 1, This is interesting. Then I had to think about it. When we go to Offenbarung 1, go. Revelation 1, verse 1. It says here, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which, which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So who reveals the Son? So, wer ist es, der der Sohn offenbart? The Father, right? Der Vater. So, see, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. So, the right? Offenbarung Jesus Christus, die Gott ihm gab. Yes. Amen. 
Uh, and also when you go to Matthew 16. Men det är också Matteus 16. Det. And let's read verses 16 to 17. Vers 16 und 17. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon but Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So here we see that the Father reveals the Son. Right? Okay. But when you go now to Matthew 11, we jetzt zu Matthäus 11 gehen. Let's read verse 27. Vers 27. It says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So who is revealing the Father? So wer offenbart den Vater? The Son, right? The Son, Christ. Christus. So the Father reveals Christ. So the Vater offenbart Christus. And Christ reveals the Father, right? Und Christus offenbart den Vater. Because Christ also says, who seeth me, seeth the Father, right? Yes, but there's mm -hmm. also a connotation that you become the Son. Mm -hmm. You reveal the Father. And the Which Father is reveals things yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. So you've got to look at this in a third person. Yes. I mean, when you, when you become the Son, Christ becomes your Father, right? Yes, as I'm saying. Yeah. So the Father is revealing things to you which you're mm -hmm. revealing to others. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're revealing the Father because you're revealing His character. Yes. Okay. So, so when you have this revelation of Jesus Christ... So when you have this revelation of Jesus Christ... Hast, I mean, the Father reveals Christ to you, right? The Father offenbart Christus zu dir. Yeah, but at the same time, you will also see the Father through this. Okay. Zur selben Zeit wirst du den Vater dadurch sehen. Because when you see Christ, you also will see the, the Father. Und wenn du Christus siehst, wirst du auch den Vater sehen. Okay, and this is what it says in John 17. This is what it says in John 17, verse 3. This is life eternal that they might know thee, right? The only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is ewiges Leben, dass sie dich kennen, der einzig wahre Gott und Jesus Christus, den du gesandt hast. So, through the revelation, you will see the Son, the Father, and the Son. So, okay. durch die Offenbarung, du wirst den Vater und den Sohn sehen. Okay. So, let's continue now in the quote. Wir weiter in den Zitat. So it is. So, yes. so it says, so it is the Father that is revealed in the world and revealed to us and revealed in us in Christ. This is the one thing that we are studying all the time. This is the center around which everything else circles. And Christ, having taken our human nature and all things in the flesh, and so having become ourselves, when we read of him and the Father's dealings with him, we are reading of ourselves and of the Father's dealings with us. So that's the point he basically makes, you know, how the Father dealt with Christ is an illustration of how the Father deals with us, right? because he represents us. So wie der Vater mit Christus umgegangen ist, ist wie der Vater mit uns umgeht, denn Christus hat uns dargestellt. Okay, but the point I'm, I made just here to Brother Mark is that when we become sons, Aber wenn wir Söhne werden, yeah, who will be our Father? Wer wird unser Vater sein? Christ, right? Christus. Okay, so therefore in this sense, how the Father dealt with Christ is how Christ will deal with us. In dem okay. Sinne, wie der Vater mit Christus umgegangen ist, ist wie Christus mit uns umgehen wird. Yes. Amen. Everybody understands this? Can you understand this? Yeah. Okay, good. Because what happened, for instance, uh, who was the father of Timothy, let's say? Then, wer war der Vater von Timotheus zum Beispiel? Paul, right? Paulus. Yes. So... Let's go now to Isaiah 53. Let's 
And uh, let's read verse 10. Verse Just say. This is you know, this chapter where Christ died for us, right? This is chapter where Christ died for us. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yea, sorry, no. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So, when he offered now his soul for sin, so as er seine Seele für die Sünde aufgab, what did he now see? Was sah er? His seed, right? His ah, okay. seed. Er hat seine Same gesehen. Yeah. And his seed are his children. Yes? Seine Same, das sind seine Kinder. Okay, in verse 11. Vers 11. Yeah. And he shall see the trail of his soul. Okay, who's tra travailing? So, wer, wer leidet? The woman. The woman, right? Die Frau. When she's about to bring forth children, children right? Wenn sie bevorsteht, Kinder zu gebären. Okay, and uh, when we go now to Hebrews, I think it's chapter 2, but maybe somewhere else. Yes. Let's read verse 10. It says, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So through his death, what did he do? So through his death, what did he do? He became the captain of the salvation. Yes, and he also brought many sons to glory, right? He brought many sons to glory. And now when you continue in verse 11. When we in verse 11 further read. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold I and the children which God hath given me. So what did God give unto him? So, was hat Gott ihm gegeben? These children, right? The Kinder. These many sons that he now brings forth unto glory. Okay. Viele Söhne, die er zur Herrlichkeit bringt. It's a seed. Seine okay. Same. So through his death, uh, he now opened the way that we can become his sons. Okay. So, durch sein Tod, er hat den Weg gebannt, dass wir seine Söhne werden. Yes, because he said, um, if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Yes, amen. Wenn ihr Christus, Christus ist, sind, seid ihr Abraham, Abraham's son. Abraham, Abraham was your father. In diesem Sinne, Abraham war dein Vater. Abraham in one sense plays Christ, in another sense he plays mm. the Father. In a gewissen Sinne, Abraham spielt Christus, aber in anderem Sinne den Vater. Yes. Okay, so yeah, therefore we can see that Christ, in, in Isaiah chapter, let's just read this for the last, I mean you can show more things about it, but just to finish this thought now, Isaiah chapter 7. Oh no, seven, eight, uh, nine. Sorry. Verse six. Verse six. Speaking about Christ here. Speaking about Christus. It says, "For unto us a child is born, unto un unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God." The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, what is one of his names? So, what is one of his The Father. The everlasting Father. Father right? Vater. So, he is the Father then to us. Okay. Er ist denn den Vater zu uns. And you can show this also in the sanctuary, but that's now a different topic. Auch in das Heiligtum zeigen, aber das wäre ein anderes Thema. Okay. So, when we go now back to the quote. So, when we jetzt zu diesem Zitat zurückkommen. It's just now the last paragraphs here. Um, 
but uh, bam, 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 we did not fully Last finish this. Hour. We did not fully finish this long paragraph here. It says here, this is the center. Let's just start there again. Everybody there? No. It's in the second, second third of this long paragraph. Yeah. So this is that central. Yes, everybody is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the center around which everything else circles. And Christ, having taken our human nature and all things in the flesh, and so having become ourselves, when we read of him and the Father's dealings with him, we are reading of ourselves and of the Father's dealings with us. What God did to him was to us. What God did for him was for us. And therefore, again, it is written, He hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. So he basically said you know, how the Father dealt with Christ, so the Father deals with us. Okay? But our Father will be then Christ. Okay? Yeah, so the role, that was a role play. Yeah? Father and Son. Rollenspiel, Vater und Sohn. Is Christ and us. Is okay? Christus und uns. Yes? Amen. Yes. Okay, good. So, next paragraph. Next absence. In all points it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, and he is our brother in the nearest blood relationship. Yeah. So he now became this nearest blood relationship because he became us. Er yeah. so, uh, ist jetzt dieser am nächsten Verwandte zu uns, weil er jetzt uns geworden ist. Yeah. He now became this next of kin that can redeem us. Er uh, ist dieser nächste in Blutlinie geworden, weil so dass er uns erlösen kann. Yeah. We are now to study now. Okay, this we don't need to read. Now let's go to the next paragraph. So next absatz. Who was the redeemer in the book of Ruth? The nearest of kin. Boaz could not come in as a redeemer until it was found that the one who was nearer than he could not perform the office of redeemer. Now, Satan, he cannot redeem us. Okay? So, Satan kann uns nicht erlösen. The redeemer must not only, sorry, the redeemer must be not only one who was near of kin, but he must be the nearest among those who are near. And therefore Boaz could not step into the place of redeemer until, by another stepping out of the place, he became really the nearest. Now that is the precise point that is made in the second chapter of Hebrews. In Ruth, you remember, Naomi's husband had died. The inheritance had fallen into the hands of others. And when she came back from Moab, it had to be redeemed. No one but the nearest of kin could do it. This is the story also in the second of Hebrews. Here is the man Adam who had an inheritance the earth, and he lost it, and he himself was brought, brought into bondage. In the Gospel in Leviticus it is preached that if one had lost his inheritance, himself and his inheritance could be redeemed, but only the nearest of kin could redeem. Upon earth is a man, Adam, who lost his inheritance and himself, and you and I were in it all. And we need a redeemer. So Adam also represents us, right, in the negative way that we lost our inheritance. Okay. So Adam stellt uns da in dem Sinne, dass wir unsere Erbschaft verloren haben. But only he who is nearest in blood relationship can perform the office of redeemer. Jesus Christ is nearer than a brother, nearer than anyone. He is a brother, but he is nearest among the brethren, nearest of kin, actually. Not only one with us, but he is one of us and one with us by being one of us. Okay, so he became ourselves. Okay, therefore he became the nearest kin possible. Er ist uns geworden und deswegen ist er am nächsten Verwandte wie nur möglich geworden. Next paragraph. And the one lesson that we are studying still and the leading thought is how entirely Jesus is ourselves. We found in the preceding lesson that he is altogether ourselves. In all points of temptation, wherever we are tempted, he was ourselves right there. In all the points in which it is possible for me to be tempted, he, as I, stood right there. Against all the knowledge and ingenuity of Satan to tempt me, Jesus, myself, stood right there and met it. 
Against all the power of Satan put forth and the temptation upon me, Jesus stood as myself and overcame. So also with you and so with the other man, and thus comprehending the whole human race, he stands in every point wherever any one of the human race can be tempted as in himself or from himself. In all this he is ourselves and in him we are complete against the power of temptation. In him we are overcomers, because he, as we, overcame. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Okay. Uh, speaking about, I mean, this is, this is speaking about whichever the first about, that's the experience. That we yes. Have. Okay, so, it basically says that uh, Christ, in all the temptations he suffered, it says that Christ, in all the temptations he suffered, yeah. he was... Uh, representing us being tempted. Er stellte uns da, als wir versucht wurden. Okay, so and because he overcame, und weil er überwunden hat, yeah. by faith we can then partake of his success. In durch Glaube okay. können wir teilnehmen an seinen Erfolg, indem das er überwunden hat. Okay, so in this sense he already lived through our life. Okay. In dem Sinne, er hat bereits unser Leben durchgelebt. Yeah. And he conquered on our behalf. Okay. Er hat uh, unsere Stadt überwunden. And therefore, by faith, we can then just basically take over his conquering. Okay, and then also conquer. Okay. So, deswegen durch Glaube, wir können seinen Sieg übernehmen. And, and obviously it's then, it's perfect uh, when... We also become sons like he became a son. Okay. This is perfect when we are Söhne werden wie er Sohn geworden ist. Uh, but also as a child, but did he fall into sin? So, in, as a child, yes. did he fall into sin? Also, auch als ein Kind ist er in die Sünde gefallen? No, right? Nein. Okay, so actually also yeah. now yeah, there's sufficient grace to meet every temptation, even so, in childhood. So okay. auch jetzt, sogar auch in die Kindheit, gibt es genug Gnade, um jeder Versuchung yes, zu begegnen. But, yes, but you got to differentiate between those two terms, they're different. Yeah, they're different, but still, yeah, he did not sin as a child. Okay. So, diese zwei Zeiten sind anders, aber dennoch hat er als Kind nichts gesündigt. Yeah. So, yes, but why, why are you bringing that out? No, because we are now children, okay. So you have these two examples here, you have Jesus and you have also the child Samuel. Right? Du hast diese zwei Beispiele da, du hast Jesus und den Kind Samuel. So, there, there's never any justification for sin. Okay? Es gibt nie Rechtfertigung für Sünde. Yeah, even we as being children, we have no justification for sin. So, auch wir als Kinder gibt es keine Rechtfertigung für die Sünde. Okay, and can we shut the window for now? Okay. Well, that's good. Mm. I'm just saying that there's a, dif there's a difference between when you're a son and when you're not a son. Yes, of course. It's a difference between when you're a son and when you're not a son. But what, I'm, what I want to say is that he also, as a child, he represented us as a child as well. Okay. What I want to say is that he was a child, he had us also as children dargestellt. Okay, so, but the only means to basically have having access to his uh, success is through faith. Aber der okay. einzige Zugang zu seinem Erfolg ist durch Glauben. Yeah. And that is the problem that we as children, yeah, we have not fully learned how to exercise faith properly. Das ist das okay. Problem, die wir haben als Kinder. Wir haben noch nicht gelernt, Glaube auszuüben. Okay. Perfect. So we have the child Samuel, we have the child Jesus as so perfect examples. Okay. Haben das Kind Jesus und das Kind Samuel als perfekte Beispiele yeah. da. But uh, we don't copy these perfect examples because we don't know how they to exercise faith properly. Aber wir ahnen diese perfekte Beispiele nach, weil wir wissen, ich glaube, perfekt aufzuüben. Okay. We, we don't copy, that's it. You said we do. No. Did I? Yes. Wir kopieren sie nicht. Yes. I mean, we should copy them, but because we are dull of hearing, you know, we don't really copy them as we should. Okay. Wir sollten sie kopieren, aber weil wir schwerhörig sind, wir kopieren sie nicht, wie wir sollten. Okay. So, 
Therefore we can see Christ is our substitute, okay? Deswegen können wir sehen, Christus ist unser Stellvertreter. Yeah, and he basically not only bore the penalty of our sins on the cross. Und er hat nicht nur die Strafe unserer Sünden am um, Kreuz auf sich genommen. Yeah. But he also went through the plan of salvation as ourselves, okay? Aber er ist auch die Erlösungsplan hindurchgegangen als uns. Yeah, from the beginning to the very end. Vom okay. Anfang bis zum Ende. And he gave us a perfect pattern to follow. Okay. Er hat uns eine perfekte Muster gegeben, die wir folgen können. And in every situation he represented ourselves and overcoming as ourselves. Okay. Und in jeder Situation er hat uns dargestellt, in dem dass er überwunden hat in, als uns. And also he made perfect repentance on our behalf. Auch er hat perfektes Buße getan. Uh, he had a perfect relationship with the Father on our behalf. Mit der Vater, yeah. uh, um, Stadt. Yeah. And he resisted every temptation on our behalf. Okay. Jeder Versuchung an unser Stadt and through faith we can have access to this life that he lived on our behalf. And then also come of conquerors. Okay. So that we can also be overcome by him. Also, Paul could say, follow me, like I follow Christ. Yes, okay. Yeah. Because, you know, was like, uh, yeah, like Christ uh, living also the perfect pattern, yeah. right? Okay. All right, so everybody can follow? So can jeder follow? Okay, so therefore this topic about Christ our substitute is a key topic. And once we really understand this and learn how to exercise faith, then we can really partake of his, his substitution for us. Okay. Amen. Okay. Then any questions left? Okay, then let's close with our prayer round.